ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها فان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون عباد الله اخوه الايمان الله سبحانه وتعالى he sent his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he revealed his noble book Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem and he legislated this religion the religion of Islam with its laws its rulings its morals and its ethics in order to bring humanity success in this life and the hereafter salvation in this life and the hereafter happiness in this life and the hereafter and so if you look at the laws of islam and the religion of islam you will see that all of the laws are there in order to protect our interests in this life and the hereafter and to remove potential harms from us in this life and in the hereafter and so and so whoever practices the religion of islam and remains upright upon this religion and lives according to its laws and lives within the boundaries of halal and haram he will succeed in this life and the hereafter and the one who opposes islam and does not live by its sharia its laws and its rulings that person only destroys their dunya and destroys their akhirah Allah subhanahu wa said fa imma yatiyannakum minni huda that whenever guidance comes to you from me fa man ittaba'a hudaya then whoever follows that guidance fa la yadillu wa la yashqa that person will not be misguided neither will he face misery in this life and the hereafter wa man a'rada an dhikri and the one who turns away from my remembrance turns away from my guidance fa inna lahu ma'ishatan dhanka then that person will have a wretched distressed life wa nahshuruhu yawm alqiyamati a'ma and then on the day of resurrection he will have further misery because he will be resurrected blind عباد الله اخوه الايمان the ulama they speak about maqasid al-shari'a the ulama they speak about the objectives of the shari'a the fundamental primary objectives of the shari'a and there are five main primary fundamental objectives of the shari'a they are known as maqasid al-shari'a and that is that islam has come to protect and safeguard five basic fundamental matters hifdhu ad-din islam has come to protect your religion hifdhu al-aql islam has come to protect your intellect hifdhu al-mal islam has come to protect your wealth hifdhu an-nasab islam has come to protect your lineage your families your marital relationships wa hifdhu an-nafs and islam has come to protect your lives your blood and all of this is sacred in islam 
the religion of the people, meaning Islam, Tawheed, and the intellect, wealth, a person's lineage, offspring, and a person's blood. All of this is sacred and pre protected in Islam. And so if a person was to ponder over the laws of Islam, that which is halal and that which is haram, and the rulings of Islam, and all of the akhlaq and the adab, the behaviors that Islam teaches us, you will see every single one of them has been legislated pro to protect maqasid al-shari'a. Ah. One of these five matters or more than one. And anything in Islam which endangers or violates one of these fundamental matters and objectives in Islam, this is considered to be a crime. And for every crime which endangers one of these five matters, there is a punishment. There is a ruling. In this life and in the hereafter. And all of this is there. Why? To protect our interests. To protect humanity. To, br to bring success. To save humanity in this life and the hereafter. We said, Hifdud deen. Protecting your religion. Hifdul aql, protecting your intellect. Hifdul mal, protecting your wealth. Hifdul nasab, protecting your lineage and your offspring and your family relations. Wa hifdul nafs, and protecting you, your lives and your blood. And so you see, for example, that Islam, it made a sub haram. And a sub is to insult another person. And not only is sub haram, but it is a crime in Islam. And also Islam, it forbade fighting, al-qital. And not only is it haram, it is a crime. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sibabul Muslim fusuq, that insulting, swearing are another Muslim. This is fisq, a clear crime, disobedience, corruption. وَقِتَالُهُ kufr, And fighting another Muslim. This is kufr, disbelief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ And do not take the life of a person whom Allah has made innocent, sacred. Never mind fighting, but even pointing a weapon, pointing a knife, Carrying a knife, showing a knife against another Muslim. The one who does this, the Prophet ﷺ told that person, don't ascribe to Islam. Don't even call yourself a Muslim if you're going to do this. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man Hamala Alayna Silah Falaysa Minna. That whoever threatens us with a weapon, shows a weapon against us, Laysa Minna, that person is not from us. Meaning he should not be ascribing himself to Islam because this is not from the actions of the people of Islam. We see that Islam has made zina, adultery, haram and has made it a crime. Made stealing haram and it is a crime to protect those five matters. The Prophet ﷺ, he negated iman from the adulterer when he or she commits adultery and from the thief when they are stealing. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La yazni zani in a yazni wa huwa mu'min. That a person, an adulterer, when he is committing adultery, is not a mu'min. Wala yashrub al khamar in a yashrub wa huwa mu'min. And a person, when he is drinking alcohol or taking intoxicants, whilst he is doing that action, he is not a mu'min. Wala yasriku in a yasriku wa huwa mu'min. And a thief, whilst he's stealing, he's not a mu'min. And Islam made al-qadhf haram. And al-qadhf is to falsely accuse a believing man or a believing woman of something which they are free from. It is haram. And it is a crime in Islam. Because protecting one's honor and one's deen and aql, this is from maqasid al-shari'a. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, وَالَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ 
ثم لم يأتوا بأربعة شهداء فجلدوهم ثمانين جلدة that those people who falsely accuse believing women meaning of fahisha indecency and they do not bring with them four witnesses then they are to be lashed 80 times because false accusation slander is a crime in Islam and Islam made al-khamar haram and made it a crime made drugs haram and made it a crime made intoxicants haram and made it a crime and this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam not only did he curse alcohol but he cursed every single person involved with any stage of the fermentation and the selling, the buying, the carrying, the transporting, even growing the grapes for them to be fermented for alcohol. All of this was cursed by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, La'an Allah al Khamar. May the la'na, may the curse of Allah be upon Khamar. And Khamar here does not only mean alcohol. Pay attention to this. Khamar, it means anything which intoxicates a person's mind. Whether it is alcohol or drugs or any other form of intoxication. La'an Allah al Khamar. May the curse of Allah be upon al Khamar. Washaribaha, the one who drinks it. Wasaqiha, the one who pours it. Waba'iha, the one who sells it. The one who buys it, the one who transports it, the one who grows its fruits, the one who ferments its fruits, all of these people, la'an Allah, may the curse of Allah be upon them. Why? Because it is a crime in Islam. And it is haram. And in Islam, gambling is haram. And it is a crime in Islam. And it is from the actions of shaitan. It is from the work of shaitan. He said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu, innama al-khamru wal-maysir. O people of Iman, verily khamr and maysir, gambling. And then he said towards the end of the ayah, rijs, that this is filth and impurity, min amali shaytan, from the work of shaytan, not from the work of the Muslims. Fajtanibu, so stay far away from this. Na'allakum tuflihun, because it will bring you success. If you stay away from this haram and this crime and this dirt and filth, it brings you success. And Islam has made bid'ah haram. And bid'ah is a crime in Islam. Why? Because it threatens the deen of the people, the religion of the people. It threatens al-Islam. And this is why the Prophet wasallam he cursed innovations. And he cursed those people who accommodate or give refuge to the innovators. The hadith is in Sahih Muslim. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La'an Allah, man la'ana walidahu. May the curse of Allah be upon a person who curses or insults his own father. Wallahan Allah man dhabaha li ghayri Allah. And may the curse of Allah be upon a person who slaughters an animal for the other than Allah, meaning a shirk. وَلَعَنَ Allah مَنْ آوَى muhditha. And may the curse of Allah be upon a person who accommodates or gives refuge to an innovator. Because through this action, you are endangering the deen of the people and misguiding the people and opening the doors of misguidance. And Islam, it made ghish haram. Dishonesty, treachery, cheating in our dealings, in our businesses, going back on our promises, in our contracts. And it is a crime. And this is why the Prophet wasallam, he addressed those people who partake in ghish, cheating, dishonesty, treachery. And he said, if you're going to do this action, don't ascribe to Islam. He said, Man ghashana laysa minna. That whoever cheats us, deceives us, is treacherous towards us, laysa minna, he's not from us, not from the people of Islam, because this is not the guidance of Islam. We see that Islam, it has made rishwa haram, bribery is haram, blackmailing is haram. 
And not only is it haram, but it is a crime. And this is why the Prophet wasallam sent the la'na of Allah upon the one who gives bribery. And the one who accepts bribery. He said, la'na Allah rashi wal murtashi. May the la'na of Allah be upon a person who bribes. And the one who accepts a bribe. Why? Because it endangers the rights of the people, the deen of the people, the intellect of the people, the offspring of the people, the lineage, their money, their wealth, their businesses, their livelihoods, their blood. So it is a severe crime in Islam. We see that Islam has made sihr, haram, magic, any type of magic, fortune telling, astrology, horoscopes, haram and a crime. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man saddaka kahinan," that the one who goes to a fortune teller and believes what the fortune teller is telling him, "Fakad kafara bima unzila Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam," then that person has disbelieved in that which was sent to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I Islam and Tawheed disbelieved, so it is haram and kufr, and it is a crime. And we see that Islam has made lying haram and a crime. And slander is haram and a crime. And backbiting is haram and a crime. And mocking another person, swearing, insulting, belittling, joking about another person at their expense to belittle them, dishonor them, to hurt their feelings. Not only haram, it is a crime in Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa teaches us these beautiful manners in the Quran. He said, Ya ladina amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawm. O people of Iman, a people should not mock or humiliate another people. Then later on, wala nisa'un min nisa. And a group of women should not mock, joke about, belittle another group of women. Wala talmizu anfusakum. And do not insult each other. And he said, Wala tanabazu bil alqab. And do not give bad nicknames to each other. He said later on, Ya ayyuhalladina ama nujtanibu kathira min al dhan. O people of Iman, avoid much suspicion. Bad thoughts about the people. Wala tajassasu. Later on, do not spy upon each other. Wala yaghtab ba'dukum ba'dha. And let not each other backbite others. All of this haram in Islam and a crime in Islam. And we see that Islam, it has made personal sins haram. Personal acts of disobedience haram. Because it endangers your own deen, your own intellect, your own offspring. So all of these actions and many more actions, they are not only haram, but they are a crime. And why did Islam make them a crime? Because it endangers maqasid al-sharia. Those five matters which Islam was sent in order to protect. Ibadallah ikhwat al-iman. So a Muslim is the one who safeguards those five, five matters. Protects them. Does not endanger and violate them. So the one who transgresses and violates the religion, the Islam of the people. In Islam, mujrim is a criminal. The one who violates the intellect of the people through the selling of alcohol and intoxicants in Islam, mujrim, he's a criminal. The one who violates and steals and takes the wealth of the people in Islam, mujrim, criminal. The one who violates the nasab, the lineage, the offspring of people, haram relationships, Endangers people's offspring, endangers people's lineage, lineage. The one who insults people's lineage. The one who mocks people's lineage. Their families, their fathers, their mothers. Mujrim, criminal insan. And the one who violates and endangers people's lives. Blood. Mujrim. Is a criminal. وَلَيْسَ الْمُسْلِمُ mujrim, And a Muslim cannot be a criminal. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله 
والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد إخواني المسلمين We are living in a society and this is not hidden from anybody here in which there are many many problems and every day in the news we hear of more crimes knife crimes are increasing gun crime is increasing the spread of drugs and intoxicants Never mind the personal sins which Islam has made haram. Then in addition to this, weakness of iman, weakness of haya, a lack of respect, the spread of ignorance. And we don't have to look at the big cities. And neither do we have to look at other communities. Rather in our own town, within our own community, amongst our own families, our own children the Muslims and the children of the Muslims and the communities of the Muslims, we see these crimes are becoming widespread. And all of you are aware only yesterday or two, three days ago, that which was reported in fights breaking out between Muslim boys from Nelson and Bryfield and authorities getting involved and stop and search warrants being given out and perhaps curfews, all of this becoming widespread. And this is not the actions of the Muslims. This is not the actions of a person who represents Islam. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ taught us the opposite. He defined a Muslim. He said in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, Al Muslimu man salim al Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. That the Muslim, the definition of a Muslim, is the one whom the other Muslims are safe from his hands and from his tongue. And in a narration, Al-Muslimu man salim al-nas min yadihi wa lisani That a Muslim is the one whom the other people are safe from his hands and from his tongue. And subhanAllah, if you look at the history of the Muslim community, even in Nelson or in the UK, when our fathers, when our forefathers came to these communities and sometimes they ended up in a particular city or neighborhood in which there was drugs, and gangs, and prostitution, and filth. And then the Muslim community came there, in the 70s and the 80s. And that area was cleaned up, and drugs reduced, masajid were built, women felt safe. Our forefathers, they gained the respect of the non-Muslims. They were known for being hardworking. They gained the respect of the authorities. And this was what they gave to Islam. And then after this, the next generation came. Our generation. And because of a, of a lack of Iman, a lack of Taqwa, a lack of Haya, and also a lack of Tarbiyah, a lack of Islam, a lack of, a lack of education, then the opposite happened. More crimes. Dirty areas, people endangered, people not feeling safe, looked down upon by the Muslims, by the non-Muslims, by the elders, by the young, by the authorities. All of this because of a lack of Iman, a Taqwa and al haya And therefore, our message to those young Muslims, the boys and girls who are involved in gangs and drugs and on the streets, away from their families, knife crimes, is that you have to know you represent Islam and you represent your culture and you represent the masajid you represent your fathers and your family and so these actions they not only bring a shame upon you but they bring a shame upon your religion your culture, your family, your father, your mother and you're belittle in the eyes of the people because al-iz, honor is for the Muslims and for those who abide, to Islam, abide by Islam. And whenever a Muslim strays away from Islam and the akhlaq of Islam, that person is not respected, only humiliated, dishonored, looked down upon. And also ikhwat al-iman, our responsibility. The elders, the adults, the a'imma, the practicing brothers and sisters, to talk to the youth, to guide them, to stop them. When you're passing by them on the street, don't ignore them. Speak to them. If you see something wrong happening, speak to them. 
and there's still a level of respect. Allahumma aizz al-Islam wal muslimin. Allahumma aizz al-Islam wal muslimin. Allahumma adhill al-shirka wal mushrikeen. Allahumma dammir a'da'aka a'da'a al-deen. Allahumma ansur deenaka wa kitaba wa sunnata nabiyyik wa ibadaka al-mu'minin. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-ghina. Allahumma aati nufusana taqwaaha wa zakkiha anta khayru wa zakkaaha. Anta waliyuha mawlaaha. اللهم أصلح شباب المسلمين وشاباتهم اللهم اجعلهم قرة عين لمجتمعاتهم وأسرهم وآبائهم وأمهاتهم اللهم أعزهم بالإسلام اللهم أعز الإسلام بهم اللهم حبب إليهم الإيمان وزينه في قلوبهم اللهم كره إليهم الكفر والفسوق والعصيان اللهم اجعلهم من الراشدين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أص اللهم أصلح نساء المسلمين اللهم ارزقهن الحياة والعفاف والحشم والإيمان اللهم أعذهن من التبرج والسفور يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي فيها معادنا اللهم اجعل الحياة اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا من كل خير اللهم اجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وصلى الله على نبينا وسلم وأقم الصلاة